Last and actually certainly least, it's the Chicago Bears on behind the pen. And I got to talk about the Bears. I, I wasn't going to do it, right? Because I was rambling a little bit. I talked half hour worth of Major League Baseball news for you. If you're on YouTube, what's up, guys? I'm here talking Chicago Bears again. And oh, they're in the news for all the wrong reasons. And I feel like that's been a trend over the last few seasons now. I mean, let's go back. Let's recap. Let's just Let's just go back in time, right? Now, okay, we are on the verge of the end of Jay Cutler's tenure here in Chicago, and for me, it's it's sad. I'm going to be honest. I'm a big fan of Jay Cutler. I believe you guys who are haters are super critical of Cutler. Yeah, he deserves some criticism for his lack of decision-making, and yes, he looks a little lethargic at times and disinterested. I understand that. I understand that, especially against Tampa. That was miserable. He deserves all the criticism in the world for that performance because he sucked. But overall, I think it's a little unfair the amount that he received because, you know, there's a lot of pressure on the quarterback position. And, okay, he came into Chicago in 2009, right? And he was with Lovey Smith. I'm not going to, I'm not here to give excuses for Jay Cutler. I'm not going to do that. I've done that enough on the show. If you guys listen, you guys know where I stand on that. I just want to talk about the organization as a whole and where we are today because going back, I was ecstatic to get Jay Cutler in 2009. I was like, oh my gosh, yes, no more Rex Grossman. No more Kyle Orton, even though Kyle Orton was pretty solid. No more Todd Collins. No more Caleb Haney. Uh, No more uh, Eric Kramer. No more Cordell Stewart. I can go on. Let me see if, um, if I remember. No more Chad Hutchinson. No more Jim Miller. I mean, Jim Miller was okay, actually. He was probably one of the better Bears quarterbacks. Anyway. So no more of that. We have a franchise guy. Yes, Jay Cutler is going to win the Super Bowl. They got the team to do it. 2009, brutal. Absolutely brutal. Okay, Cutler led the league in interceptions. I understand that was a bad season. Move forward, 2010, boom, NFC Championship game. Love it. He was surrounded by a really good defense that still had the core pieces from the Super Bowl and and that philosophy that Lovey Smith Tampa 2 would still had success because you had guys like Briggs and Tillman still producing at a high level, Erlacher. It's like, okay, these guys, they're winding down in their career, so you better win now, and they had the talent to do so. But they failed, and we talked about it. And that was the beginning of the debacle of Jay Cutler, right, in 2010, because it looked like he gave up, especially with his facial expressions there on the sidelines after he he tore his MCL in, uh, in the NFC Championship game. By the way, he gave his team a chance a worse cha- well, first of all, in the NFC Championship game, he sucked. He was not playing well at all. And he was hurting his team if he continued to play. He couldn't plant on that knee. He couldn't do it. So for those criticizing color for quitting in that game, I'm looking at you, Maurice Jones-Drew. Shut the hell up. You're an idiot. That That's not what happened at all. So bringing Caleb Payne, we all know how it turned out. They lose. The following season, 2011, now I'll tell you what, that was the year that they would have won the Super Bowl but what happened? Jay Cutler got hurt. He broke his thumb. And I remember the play specifically. Throws a pick. Of course he throws a pick. Uh, San, against the San Diego Chargers. Down the sideline trying to make a tackle. Breaks his thumb. Uh, trying to do whatever. He does a little tomahawk thing. Gets the ball. Breaks his thumb. He's out. All the Bears really had to do. I think they were 7-1 and one at that point. And I'm doing this off. I'm sorry. I should have probably looked this up. But I think they were 7-1 and one or 7-2 and two through eight weeks of the season. And all they had to do really was win one game to put them at, because they had NFC, whatever, they had a, a one game. Just win one game and they're in the playoffs essentially, probably two. They probably need two wins in the end of it, but that's not asking a lot, right? Nine wins after going 7-1 and one to start the season, just win two games. Your defense won you pretty much almost all the games in 2006 when they went to the Super Bowl. Anyway, I digress. Just two games you got to win in 2011, and they failed to do that. And that is in large part because of Lovey Smith, the decision to keep in Caleb Haney, who was terrible, absolutely awful in those games, and took him way too long to bring in Josh McCown. And Josh McCown, yes, was on that 2011 roster. You can look it up. He actually played well in his two starts. I believe he finished 1-1 one and one and won the last game of the season. They finished 8-8 eight and eight that year, I do believe, without looking it up. Because they uh, they beat the Vikings in the last game of the season, I think Erlacher like did the splits in that game too in the end zone when it didn't really mean anything and that cost them the next season. But yeah, yeah, and and that was awful. They missed the playoffs. That was the year they could have won the Super Bowl. Really, if you get 
to the playoffs, Cutler may have been healthy in the first round or so, but nope, nope. Terrible coaching, terrible decision making, and just not enough execution in 2011 to get there when that was the year that they had all the pieces in line. And then, of course, 2012, you go 10 and 6, you miss the playoffs, Lovey Smith's fired. You still were in it. You still had enough there in terms of talent to get to a Super Bowl. And this is in large part because you had a franchise quarterback, you had Matt Forte, you had weapons on the outside. But, okay, so you move on from Lovey Smith. You want an offensive style sort of philosophy within the coaching staff, offensive coordinator, head coach. Bruce Arians, available. He even said, yeah, I thought I was going to get hired by the Chicago Bears, and then I didn't. And who do they hire in replace of uh, Mr. Arians, who is still haunting the Chicago Bears to this day? And that is Dr. Death, Mark freaking Trestman. They hire Mark Trestman instead of Bruce Arians. That is the biggest mistake any franchise has ever made, okay? And Phil Emery, the GM, what the hell? Why is he in any sort of position in terms of player development or or responsible for bringing in talent to fill rosters? This guy's an idiot. He's an accountant. And he's getting lectured by Ted Phillips, who's an accountant. He's been an accountant for years, like 30 years. He doesn't know anything about football. He just knows numbers. Why... Whoa, who was in charge of this organization? What are you doing? The mechanics are like, ah, it's fine. Yeah, we're good. We're going to be fine. No, you're not going to be fine. You're going out and signing Jared Allen, spending all this money on, on these talents, and it's just a waste, right? And we go into it, 20, 2013. Yeah, you, you bring in a guy, Mark Tressman, quarterback whisperer from Canada. My goodness, this stupid-ass guy. Doesn't run the ball. You have Matt Forte. Doesn't run the ball at all. Has no sort of run game. You throw it all on Cutler. Cutler had career seasons, yeah, under Tressman, but that's because he was throwing it 60 times a game. And of course he's going to lead the league in interceptions if he's always dropping back to pass. It doesn't make any sense. You have Matt Forte. You have a capable offensive line for the first time in Cutler's tenure, and you're making him throw 60 times a game. That's why they lose, because you can game plan for that. And their defense... Now, here's another problem. Their defense was old. And they had guys like Lance Briggs saying, I don't want to run any uh, other defense. I'm going to stick with the Tampa 2 and Lovey Smith. So here comes Mel Tucker, who, by the way, comes from Jacksonville. They were the 32nd ranked overall defense the year before. And Mel Tucker's learning a system that's not even his, and he's coaching a Tampa 2 system that he knows nothing about. And, of course, we see it over those two years, 2013-2014, historically the worst in the history of the franchise in terms of defensive production. Okay? You can blame Cutler all you want. Go ahead. He's done his fair share of throwing interceptions and turning the ball over. That's one of his big flaws. But I'll tell you what. He is not responsible for the decisions made by management, the decisions made on the roster, decisions made on the coaching staff. There's a reason why Jay Cutler has gone through three different head coaches and six different offensive coordinators, and all these different systems. His, he's on his third GM. This is not on... This is this is the Chicago Bears as a whole, a fundamental problem within the Chicago Bears as a whole. I didn't even mention the fact that they don't draft right. They suck at drafting. This is why the Chicago Bears suck today, is because they haven't been able to operate like a legitimate franchise. And here we are, Two and seven, you have a locker room that says they're done with Jay Cutler. Half of them say that they don't like him. Half of them say, yes, we do. And then the majority of them just don't give a damn anymore. And then you have John Fox, who comes in. His specialty is to take a franchise, an inept franchise, create this sort of core through young players, developing young players, and turning them into legitimate contenders. In a relatively short amount of time, historically. Well, we're not seeing that. And I'll tell you what, I think the magic within John Fox is just gone. I don't see it at all. This philosophy that John Fox is pushing, I said this in my Bears reaction video, and these players aren't responding to it. Then you have Alshon Jeffrey. It gets better, Bears fans. Alshon Jeffrey is suspended without pay just about $4 million he's losing in a franchise year in a contract season where the Bears franchised him because they weren't sure whether or not they should sign him long-term because he hasn't been on the field enough, and he's asking for Des Bryant kind of money, but he can't stay on the field because he's always hurt. So what does he do? He takes 
a recommended dose of whatever, the supplement that prevents anti-inflammatory injuries, sort of things within the muscles. Well, it's on a banned substance list, dude. Literally look it up. Just, just take three minutes and be like, okay, NFL, can I take this? Will I get suspended for this? Yes? Okay, I won't do it. Okay, you got something else for me? All right, I'll take that. I'll take aspirin. I'll take uh, ibuprofen, whatever. Just give me something. Not this recommended dose that'll get me out four games. So I'll tell you what. Alshon Jeffrey is most likely done as a bear, in my opinion. This is pretty much it. And he's not coming back. So is he even... No, I, I can't even tell you because he hasn't been on the field to produce. Like, this year has been bad for him to begin with. And throwing the fact that he's been missing four games... That's just tape that other teams are missing out on because he hasn't been on the field really at all throughout his career. He misses, what was it, seven games? He missed seven games last season. So, my gosh, this Bears team sucks. They need to hit on the draft. They need to hit on the draft this year. They have to have a good draft. And you know what I'm telling you? I don't want Fox back. I really don't. But I feel like he's going to be back. And I'm not really blaming Ryan Pace as much, but he's not off you know, into the nice shady green meadow either here because he's on the hook. He's responsible for where they are too, but over a two-year span, what can you say about a GM? You can't fix the entire mess of a Chicago Bears in such a short amount of time. It's a different kind of perspective for a GM as opposed to a coach. I can say fire Fox because what has he done over the last two years that warrants him to be back for next year? You know what I mean? But I feel like he's had such an impact on the construct of this roster that he has to be here for the full length of his three years in his contract. But after that, he's done. He is done. And at that point, do you really trust this staff to hire a a different head coach? I mean, you got to figure out something. You're going to have to draft a quarterback this year. They probably sign Hoyer as a placeholder and then let the quarterback develop. But do you want Donald Loggins doing that for you? Do you want Donald Loggins developing this young man? As your franchise quarterback? I don't think so. Not me. I don't feel good about it. But that's just, oh, gosh. There is so much into this Bears franchise to the point where they're almost like the Cleveland Browns. And it's sad to say that. I'll ask you guys this. When was the last time we saw a Bears game that meant anything? And I'll tell you, it's 2013 when they lost to the Packers in the last game of the season. That was it. Since then, it's been misery. And that leads... And this is a Chicago Bears town. This is a big football town, and nobody cares anymore. They're just turning it off. And I don't blame them. I sat through that entire uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers game, and it was miserable. That was the worst football game I've seen, really, since they got shellacked by the Packers out of the bye. And even before that, they got destroyed by the Eagles the week before that in 2014. But I can't end it on such a negative note, guys. Behind the pen, that's not how it works. Okay, I want to talk about something a little positive here on this Bears team. I like Pernell McPhee. I'm, I'm becoming a big fan of Pernell McPhee. That guy's nuts. He's like insane. If you listen to him uh, speak post game and you, you see some of his quotes in the paper or whatever, boy, I don't want to get in that guy's way, but I'm telling you, I like it. I like the fiery passion that he has. And you know what? This, this front seven is starting to take shape. And I've said this a little bit before. I like what I see. I think Akeem Hicks was a solid signing. They just got to stay healthy. Eddie Goldman's going to be a legitimate player. Leonard Floyd is stepping up to be something very solid. And you guys got, I don't know, is Craven LeBron going to be good? I don't know. He's a rookie. Uh, they're talk, speaking highly of him, whatever. Tracy Porter's been fine, right? But he's old. He's just a, a, a placeholder there. That secondary's in question. I like Adrian Amos out there. But other than that, Harold Jones Corte is just a loose cannon, just throwing his body around. He kind of reminds me. Of Brandon Merriweather. Oh my gosh. Do you remember Brandon Merriweather? I don't know. Okay, maybe that may be like a unfair compensation because Merriweather was a nut job and he was just literally like penalized every single freaking down. He tried to make a tackle, you know, just throwing his head into, you know, okay. But yeah, in, in the similar sort of play style where he's just not so much using his brain in his, his Harold Jones Corte, but I shouldn't really complain about him so much because whatever, right? Whatever at this point. You see what you got on the field. You just let them play. And who's going to be worthy enough to gain a roster spot moving forward? And that's the state of the Chicago Bears right now. It's bad. It's very bad. I just, ugh. I'm glad I got that out, though, because I, I needed a little bit of sort of venting. And I'm, I'm, I hope you guys listen to this because, and I hope you guys understand that it's a, it's, it's a huge problem within this front office. The ineptitude of this franchise has been relevant for years now, and that's why they're not successful. They haven't made the playoffs since 2010. 
It's brutal. It is absolutely brutal. They've missed the playoffs in nine of the last ten seasons. That's just unacceptable. You know? So, all right, well, I mean, I got to end the show. I got to end the show. Wow, this podcast is an hour long, guys. I hope you stay tuned for all of it because I felt like that was a really fun show. Hope you had fun as well listening. My name is Mike Rankin. This is Behind the Pen. Follow us on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, at Most Valuable Pod. We'll entertain you more so there. Speaking of entertaining you more so, become a patron, please. Can you do that for us? Patreon.com backslash Most Valuable Podcast means a lot. If you don't want to do it for Ricky, Sean, Brandon, or Mark, or Dave, do it for me, right? Because I'm obviously the most important here. Also, I'm on Twitter at Rankin906. That's where all the good content is. Make sure to subscribe. Hit the like button on these Bears videos and everything, all their all, all these other videos, leave comments. It's awesome. You guys are the best. Keep listening for more Behind the Pen because I'll be here. And as always, guys, we will see you all next time. Thank you for listening to this MVP podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Most Valuable Pod for more great podcasts.